Hey, what's up, everybody? Lonnie here, on tour with Blackfield Brides, as usual. And we got John Winters here, Hello. guitar tech, monitor engineer, and you do many hats uh, with us. We're all over the place, all of us. Yeah, that's right. So anyways, today we're at the Belasco Theater in Los Angeles, and we've done a bass guitar rig rundown in the past for my rig, but today we're going to go in a little more detail. John's going to walk us through uh, the electric guitars, monitor rig, violin, acoustic guitar, just all the extra behind the scenes stuff. We're going to go pretty in depth uh, in detail here. So this is go. this is all for our, our 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 gear nerds, our gear junkies out there, our signal flow fun people. So yeah, it's about to get super nerdy. So I'll let you uh, lead it off here, John. All right. So I guess first of all, um, everything starts with the source, whether it's guitar, vocals, bass, or in some cases, violin, keyboard, or whatever. Um, so it all kind of starts the, uh, starts there. So we'll start with guitars. So we'll start here with uh, Jake's guitar. This is the guitar he's been playing the whole tour. His E1 Schechter, Schechter guitar. It's one of my favorite ones. So basically, have the guitar, I plug it in, turn on the wireless, which is going here. So now his guitar is basically starting to be live. So from there, we just go over here, since this, it's a whole world. <laughs> so down here we have all the wireless systems. So for the for our Black Veil, we have uh, two wireless for each guy. We have two for Jake and two for Jinx, uh, basically for each tuning of the during the set. And then this one is for Lonnie. He just uses one. Right. Yeah, because we do the first half of the set, drop B, tuning, second half, drop C sharp. So the two guitarists each have different guitars. I'm just running the same guitar, but I do digital transpositions on the camper. So instead of changing guitars, I just digitally transpose myself. It's kind of a fun thing that it opens up. Uh, it opens up a lot of possibilities for a lot of tunings for a lot of the sets. Yeah. Uh, the guitars do it as well. So we go in from the guitar, hits these wirelesses, then it goes up into here where it hits a tuner so I can mute the chain and then the AB switch to go between the two different wirelesses. And then from out of the AB switch, it hits the, the campers. And so everything is, there's two of everything, one for Jake and one for Jinx. And then Lonnie is kind of on a separate page, but it kind of works the same. Yeah, and as I mentioned in our other video, uh, I personally programmed the Kempers to look like lightsaber colors, <laughs> yes. which is really the core part of our tone. It's, it's, we have our priorities straight here. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right. Um, so, and then to just finish off this rack real quick is uh, we have Andy's uh, wireless, which we'll get to. Here's his mic. Basically, it goes in the mic into the wireless. There's two ones. There's two wireless channels for Andy. One is a main one, one is a backup. I'll get to that on how that works also. Oh, so that's that's the vocal wireless? Yep. I, know, I didn't, never knew that was inside our guitar rack. Yep, this cool. is uh, the vocal, this is the main channel, and then there's a backup channel here, and it switches in between the two, which I'll show you. And then this wireless here is for the violin. Oh. And so, okay, yeah, because I know we were hardwiring the violin mm -hmm. like a couple tours ago. But yep, we were on wireless. Yep, again. violin. So basically, this whole rack is wireless, is from instruments coming to the rack and then to what ends up at the console. So everything is coming from stage to this rack in if you, the direction of things, if that makes any sense. Yeah, all the tones come from here. And funny enough, we're not even doing violin on this tour. Right. But we're ready to go if yeah. we ever did. Well, the violin might pop up here pretty soon. You never know. It's just, you never know what's going to happen here. Yeah. But do you know something that I don't know? Or <laughs> <laughs> well, take a look at the say, set list. <laughs> are we doing it, the violin tonight? It's happening. What? Which yeah. song are we doing? Save Your Two tonight. Oh, is there violin in that? Yeah. Wow, shows how much I know. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's real brief. <laughs> yeah, there is. Okay. Um, cool. Well, I'm excited. So yeah, guitar goes into goes into the wireless, which goes into the AB switch, which goes into the Kempers, and from the Kempers it goes into the console, splits out, and then goes on from there. But I'll, I'll explain that. I'm gonna set this down. Cool. So here, why don't we show Jinx's guitar while we're at it too? So Jinx has that was the Jake Pitts uh, signature Schecter, and this would be the uh, Jinx, the other guitarist in the band. Yeah, this is his BC Rich B guitar. Here, I'll come into the light. 
He's kind of got two different ones going on. This is his B guitar. And he just switched over to BC Rich a couple years ago. I know he was with BC Rich 10 years ago, then he switched to Schechter, and now he's back with BC Rich. And then he has his custom guitar, which there's going to be more of them coming out here pretty soon. But this is an older one that he's kind of bringing back, but he's got, getting a whole other new model made of these ones uh, within the next soonish, I guess. Pretty sweet, too. I like the, we got the band logo. Yeah, this one's on the his inlays. custom. This is his custom one. Nice. This one's super cool, too. A little Floyd action. Oh, yep. Yeah. And this is Lonnie's PRS bass here that he's been playing the whole tour. And yeah. then what we were talking about with the transpositions, he does a couple of uh, tr the Kemper transposes what this tuning is to a couple other tunings. Yeah, so the bass is in drop C sharp, but for the drop B songs, I just do a negative two on the Kemper. And there's a couple in drop A, so we bring it down two whole steps, and there's one in drop A sharp. So we're transposing all over the place, but I mean, the digital transpose just works so good. So we were able to do it all on one base. And I'll talk about these pickups quickly. So we just put these in. These are the active uh, EMG pickups. And I ordered them in white because I thought that would look cool. And it actually looked kind of dumb. <laughs> so we painted them black. But oh, that, is that where that's going on? Yeah, there? but the paint is kind of fading off because of my picking. So that's what that is. But yeah, the white pickups were a, a huge mistake. But I, <laughs> I do like the way they sound. So. Oh, yeah, it's, it sounds gnarly. <laughs> yeah. So there we go. So, okay. What sound is being made? Uh, let's go to the other side of this rack. And I don't even want to know how many feet of cable <laughs> exist on this tour. Like, probably like 100 miles of cable. Oh my gosh. Just, just even in my world. Um, so once the, once the campers finally are getting the sound from the guitars or the, wire, the vocal mics are getting their sound, the bass is getting their sound, it comes out of the back, different XLR connections. It hits this box right here, all the cables from the each thing, from the campers. The wirelesses, the m m mics, the violin, the bass, all goes into this box and then has a disconnect cable here that runs and hits the console over here. So all of this, wow. all of this is the consoles, which these are all the inputs into all the consoles and here is built an analog split that actually goes in to the monitor desk, which I control. and The old analog split, yeah, never and fails. It, it splits off and then it goes inside there to the, um, to the front of house desk. And then there's a long Cat 6 cable that goes from here and connects to the console at front of house. So that's how it all talks to each other. Nice. Um, so this is beyond my knowledge. <laughs> so if, if you're lost, I'm with you. And that's fine. Right. Uh, and that's I know the campers and the guitars, but this is beyond my world here. And so. then, so and then, so here, this green one. These are basically just multi-mass disconnects of uh, 12 channels at a time. So here's 12 channels of the drums. Here's another 12 channels of the drums. Here's guitars and vocals. And this is all the downstage stuff, which is uh, the backup vocal mics. Uh, the keyboards and the acoustic guitar, and it all, and then all this stuff is uh, computer tracks with the cinematics, and strings, uh, impacts, um, and uh, click tracks for tempo, so everybody can stay on the same page. Yeah, wow, so much goes into it. So to review, we got the the guitar into the digital Kemper amps into this, which runs into this, which is the, the monitor console, which right? Which is the monitor console. What is it, yeah. the X32 or something? No, this is the Allen and Heath Eli. Oh, oh I was way off. <laughs> this is a little, a little bit of a jump up from that. Not, 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 not ditching on the X32, but this is just a little bit of a jump. Okay. I'll, I'll let you keep going. Is that, was that what we were going to talk about next? It's or? all just kind of a part of it. Okay. And so once everything goes into the console here, so... Once again, 12 channels of drums, 12 more channels of drums, guitars and stuff, vocals and stuff. And so once that's into the console, it has to go out of the console for them to hear in their ears and for the house to have it out into the PA for front house so they can mix the show. Um, so let's go back to the front. 
tight uh, quarters this back tight, here. This is a tighter rig, but you know, you gotta make whatever is at work. Today we're actually set up off stage. You can see the stage is there and you gotta take stairs up there. Sometimes if the stage is big enough, we'll, this will all be set up like on the stage, in the wings, like behind curtains and whatnot, uh, or at a festival, that kind of situation, but yeah. You never know what you're gonna get. You just kind of roll into the venue, and it's like, all right, this is what we're dealing with. So today we're set up off stage, but yeah, it's kind of cool. We got this little area. Yeah, I'll be so. tucked away and hidden, and so it's kind of fun in my own little world. So once everything hits the console here, everything comes up on their own channels. Um, it'll probably be a little difficult to tell, but you know, you have your kick, snare, hat, all the toms, uh, the bass, the violin, the guitars. Acoustic guitars. Yeah, and these are all labeled too. Like you yeah. see, that's that's the kick drum channel, snare kick. drum channel. And then if you uh, go over, there's me, you know, not to get too egocentric. But. <laughs> these are the these are the mixes. So that this is what feeds into Jinx's ears, Andy's, Lonnie's, Jake, and Cece's, and then our tech one, and then a backup just in case if some RF frequencies get a little funky. I've got an aux send for my speaker here, a shout box, so I can listen to people our communication on stage or if I need to like hear guitar or something like that I can bring it up in there so basically this allows each of us to hear exactly what we want on stage so if I'm like oh I want more snare drum or more cymbal then he can just go to my channel and adjust that channel here. I would see his mix of the drums and then he wanted one more snare I'd give him some more snare yeah and also to be clear too, this board and everything here this is just for our personal mixes on stage yes now for what the audience hears there's a whole other console like this out in the front back there for our front of house guy to mix what the audience hears but john is handling our in-ear monitor mixes yep and so once all the stuff is coming in here so it feeds i feed out 16 different outputs to hit this rack over here and yeah. It never ends. So this rack here <laughs> is all the in-ear stuff. These are uh, the different mix. They're Shure PCM 1000s. So each one of these uh, feeds out to a receiver that they have on stage. Just happen to grab yours, which is nice. So they wear these on stage, and then they put their earbuds in there, and then they hear whatever our mix is. And then, um, so it all goes here, and each there's eight. Right here we have eight individual ones. There's five for the band. There's a tech one that we have our communication on and a mix so we can hear, everybody can hear the specific instrument that they need. Uh, I can hear the guitars nice and clear just to make sure if there's something weird going on, we can hear it immediately. Um, and we got click going on just in case we can hear what's going on with the tracks. That's right. Uh, I have my own personal one, so I can listen to everybody's mix. I can change what I want. If I need to listen, hear Jake's mix or Lonnie's mix, uh, Andy, I can go back and hear what they are hearing. So I can, and then when they want something changed, I can listen to their mix and make sure that when the change happens, I hear it and everything is good. Right. So you hit the the button of the name and then it recalls the sets. Yep. Is that the one? Uh, PFL. Good. Um, yeah, all that. There you yep, there so you go. see, these all change to where I like them. Now there's where Andy likes it. There's where Jinx. Jinx has got nothing going on. He, he, he's got something special going on behind, okay. behind the scenes. Yeah. So, anyways, and then yeah. So here's the laptop. We got this program called Set List, which we have all the songs in there and our drum tech actually cues the songs on here, and this activates a click track. So we can start the songs at the right tempo and keep us on beat throughout. So like if we go down here and we let's let's just go to uh, bleeders. So if I go to bleeders and then I hit this. So this is what they hear immediately when bleeder starts. They just hear that in their ears and they can they hear it count off and then they know when to start because it all goes through. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, some the old school approach might have been for the drummer to do like a one, two, three, four thing, but yeah, nowadays this is pretty, I mean, everybody does this. It's just, I don't know, it makes, makes sure that it's the same tempo as the album all the time. Sometimes you get that adrenaline going, you want to speed up, which can be cool in its own right, but I don't know. The, the show kind of runs like clockwork. 
right? And all of the guitar tones as well change automatically through MIDI synced up to this click track. Too. It's a very so. cool thing. There's a timeline for each song. Yeah. And so... So like 10 bars in or whatever, when the pre-chorus hits or something, the Kempers will automatically switch to whatever tone is needed there. It could activate delays, could activate distortion or a solo boost, whatever it is, all synced up uh, to that. So it's pretty pretty convenient, actually. Yeah, so you can... I even have like a test one where I'm, I like to make sure that the computer is working with the Kemper to make sure it's changing. So I go to this patch check, I hit play, and then if you come over to the Kempers here, you'll start seeing them change to different patches just to make sure that I know it's working. So we got, so they'll go to rhythm and then, then I'll be like, okay, well that one's gonna change. Heel change, it's gonna go back, they'll go back, and then they'll both hit rhythm, then I know that they're working. Then I hit stop, and I'm like, all right, cool, we're set. The patch changes work, and then uh, it should work for the show. Should work for the show. And hopefully they work during the show, too. <laughs> and that's just a simple MIDI cable coming out of uh, the uh, interface for the for all the for all the dot for Ableton to work. So it's just coming out of MIDI outputs into the Kemper with different program numbers, and it changes, and it, it's really a really cool thing. And it keeps it consistent every time no pedals on stage well one pedal on stage and then um, it just keeps it really consistent and then every time it's the same and it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's a lot it's going nice. on it's it's a disaster waiting to happen really things <laughs> have happened in the past <laughs> but for the most part 97.9% of the time it works perfectly <laughs> the other 3.1% is a lot of danger <laughs> um, are you waiting for us? Oh, okay. So yeah. feel free to hang out. I just I wasn't sure if you were trying to tell us something. So with uh, so let's just go to the stage. Oh, they took away the stairs. By the way, let's get a shot of the theater while we're at it here. Not too bad. The Belasco Theater. Uh, I'd love to interject on, on the acoustic here, actually. So one song we're doing is called Savior 2, which we talked about a minute ago. And there's, it starts with acoustic guitar, and then it switches really quickly to electric. So our guitarist, Jinx, has an electric on, and then he's got this uh, acoustic, I believe it's called a Gracie stand. So we can just walk up and play it, you know, with one hand. And then uh, just step away and resume to the electric part. So this is literally only used for the beginning of that one song. And uh, yeah, that's kind of cool. So I'll let you so, yeah, jump in. As we were um, looking at the back of the console, we saw those big multi-pins. And so that lives up here. So here's the other side of it. Here's 12 of them that the, half of the drums go to. And then on the other side of the drums, we have the same thing hitting this side of the kit since there's so much going on with the kit we need a whole bunch of inputs and so those are the two multi connects uh that go to the console and then the green one was the guitars and stuff like that and then the third one is down here all right this would be the fourth one i guess and that one gets the background vocals uh the keyboards connected into it and the acoustic guitar kit connects into it and so that's how everything that's how everything on the stage connects. So we call these snakes, right? Yeah. Is these, these would be basically like a multi-connect. It just right? helps to transport those uh, inputs all the way out here. Yeah, it's just... Or outputs. It's just, it are basically 12 long XLR cables, but just all nicely connected and just, you know, multi-pin snakes. Yeah. Um, so yeah. that's... that's how long does it take to uh, set all this up every day? Uh, it takes about it takes about two hours, nice. ish. I'm sure you got a pretty good rhythm. Yeah, I'm usually sleeping at when this is being set up, so I wouldn't yeah, know. know. It's <laughs> it, it, it takes about two hours, sometimes a little bit longer. Sometimes it kind of depends on the push and and how long it takes for the the truck to get unloaded and right. and how well the people handle it. <laughs> Most of the time, people handle it pretty good, but... Uh, and there's local stagehands at each venue 
that help unload all this from the trucks because all these get transported in giant road cases. A lot of road cases. So yeah. uh, these will get brought out of the trucks, put into the areas, and then John is uh, you know leading the, the setup. With I, all I lead. I basically lead uh, the audio package and the guitar package that we were just looking at. Uh, Max, our lighting engineer, our lighting designer, he does the stage and kind of with that and our drum tech they do a lot of the staging stuff to put it all the stage together yeah. um, I'm kind of on my own little paths of getting things kind of set off to the side oh another thing I wanted to mention with all the wireless stuff since we do use so much wireless stuff we every day I have to set up all these paddles for all the wireless oh yeah I've always wondered what those were so this right here is the antenna for all the ears. So this is uh, spitting out into the ears from uh, from the PSM 1000s we looked at earlier. Then this is the antenna for uh, uh, the vocal mics. And then this is the antenna for all the guitars. Wow. And so these are always have to be chilling on stage. I try to keep them this, today is a little different on stage because we're tucked away in that little nook. I usually kind of just have it close to my world, but I didn't want to have them down hidden in there. I wanted them out and about so it can have a little bit more free, open space for everything to... Yeah, but I also want to point out our most important piece of gear, other than the lightsaber colors. We got these confetti cannons today, so that's pretty cool. It's going to be like a Super Bowl victory during the encore. <laughs> <laughs> and then, so the only pedal on stage is uh, the Kemper remote, which we're using for me, because my stuff actually isn't going through MIDI, so it doesn't change automatically. So for my transpositions, uh, I just hit these buttons. We have it all programmed. So actually, I'll direct you back here. So you can see it's all labeled. So uh, the bass is tuned to C sharp. We hit this negative two to go down to to bring it into drop B. And then we stack these transpositions on top. So for like Blackbird, we'll hit that. Or for Savior 2, same thing. This is a negative one. This is a negative two. And that's actually a plus one. And these all get stacked onto that transpose. Now, t tonally, it's the same tone the whole time. But this is what we do for the uh, transpositions. <coughs> and then it's got a built-in tuner as well. So yeah, this screen reflects exactly what's happening on the full Kemper rack uh, down there. So, anything you want to add? Yeah, it's kind of nice that we uh, implemented this on uh, this tour with a lot more of the transpositions on this tour. Uh, before, I would go and press the buttons on the Kemper. Now we got it on stage. This is the first tour we're doing this, but it's working out really good, and it's fun for me, because I get to walk over and you know hit some buttons, so. Yeah, I mean, pedals are fun. So, I mean, that's kind of a, a general over, overview of everything that we got going on. Obviously, it gets a little deeper with, you know, there's all sorts of, I always keep track on batteries, getting batteries charged and distributed. I always make sure the guitars are set up the way that they need them before I bring them to warm up with. There's all sorts of little nuances. Yeah, because in addition to this, like, he's setting up all the guitars, changing all of our guitar strings. Um, you know, you know fixing. putting picks on the guitar or putting picks on the mic stands and yeah. making sure fast right you know it's just a, a, tons of little details that we're pretty high maintenance it's, but you, you pick know. it up over time and it's like, <laughs> I don't know this is year five of going back and forth between a couple positions and then combining positions together um, this has yeah. kind of been my favorite setup so far it's a little bit bigger but it's the most cohesive it's always evolving I mean you've probably done what like 200 shows with us or I don't Probably even know getting pretty close I something mean, at like this point, that yeah many shows it's always a growing thing yeah it's but, definitely uh, evolved since the first the first run it's pretty impressive and like the more lost I get hearing you talk about it the better I know it is so hey thanks for showing us this John of course uh, always appreciate your help of course on the Happy road to be here. so yeah here's uh, here's to a good show tonight <laughs>